Hi, let's read this question. The world's fastest man can run about 100 meters in 9.2 seconds. At the same rate, how many meters can he run in 45 seconds? Okay, so let's use the strategy of cubes that we have on the right side. And let's get started by identifying important information. Right here we have a number and what it represents. Great, now I have another number here and what it represents, which is time. Then I have a keyword here that it says, and I do highlight that one because when it says ray, I can do ratio tables, proportions, and I know how to work them out. Now I'm going to focus on the question. The question, how many meters, and I use blue for meters, meters, in 45, in 46 seconds. That's perfect. I did circle or underline, which I did highlight. Now I'm going to box the question. How many meters in 46 seconds? So I'm going to bring a uh, table because that's a strategy I'm going to follow. Now I'm going to fill in the table with the labels that I need to, to have for my information. On the left side, I'm going to write meters. And then on the right side, I'm going to write seconds. For meters, I'm going to use blue. And for seconds, I'm going to use orange. Great. Now I'm going to transfer the information that is given. 100 meters. That happens in how long? 9.2 seconds. Great. And then they want to know the meters, so we don't know this one. When the time is 46 seconds. Then I'm going to highlight the information in the same color so I can know from where I got my numbers. And I know that this answer is going to give me meters because it's on the meters side. Great. Okay. Now, I can do an estimation. Look, I can look at that. I can focus on the numbers uh, that I have here and here. Do I know any number that multiplies 9 and gives me 46? Not really. And I don't know either a number for 9.2, right? From here to here. I don't know the pattern. The pattern is a question mark. But what about if I want to say 46 seconds here? And I'm going to put this, since I changed the, the number from the problem, this can be just an estimation. This will be just a reference, okay? This will not be the answer. This will just to see if we're doing kind of okay. Okay, so I'm going to say to go to 45, I'm going to focus on the 9. And the 9 also is an estimation because the real number is 9.2. You see that, guys? Okay, so how do I go from 9 to 45? Right, times 5. Awesome. Times 5. So we can apply the same pattern to go from here to this number. That's going to be just an estimation. So 100 times 5 will be what? 500. Awesome. So we said that will be our estimation. In this case, method one, using the ratio table here, only gave me an estimation. This is method one. Now we're gonna do method two. And for method two, I'm gonna bring the table to set up my information, and I'm gonna make some squiggles to separate the information. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the information from the left side, just exactly the way it is. So this 100, I bring it here. The unknown, the one that we're looking for, goes right here. Then on the right side, I have 9.2. And then on the denominator, I have 46. Yes. And I'm going to identify my colors. So I can track that I got them from this section in the table. See? Awesome. So I know very well that on the right side I'm using seconds, on the left side I'm using meters. Great. Our next step could be to do cross product. We look at the numbers that are across 
and that will be multiplication and the number that is by itself is going to be division so I'm going to do the operations in this section right here so first of all I'm going to multiply so we're going to multiply 100 times 46 this multiplication is really easy because I'm going to focus on the number one and the other factor we can use this strategy only when we are multiplying powers of 10. Powers of 10 is 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so forth. So I'm going to multiply 46 times 1, and that is 46. But in reality, my no the, number, the factor is not a 1, but 100. So how many zeros do we have here? We have two. So we have those two zeros here. Awesome. So this is our uh, multiplication. Now I'm going to record my answer on the side, 4,600. Remember, I got that number from multiplying these two right here. And now I'm going to divide by the other number, 9.2. But I can't divide if I have a decimal in my divisor, so I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite the whole division. The division symbol will stay the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one place value on the divisor. And if I do so, I need to add one place value on the dividend. So my new numbers will be 92. And 4,600 is the original. But we needed to add this place value. So now we have another zero. OK, great. Now we're going to multiply. I always like to multiply by 5 because 5 is a number in the middle. I can go, and that can give me clues if I need to go for a greater or a lower factor. So let's multiply by 5. On the side, I'm going to multiply here, 92 times 5. Can you help me to multiply? 5 times 2, 10, 0, and we carry 1. 9 times 5, 45, plus 1, this is 46. So we're going to record our answer. Did 92 fit into the 4? Not really. What about into 46? Now, it doesn't work because 46 is smaller than 92. So we need to go one more digit. So we need to record our answer on top of the first 0. And that's going to be a 5. So 92 times 5, we know is 460. We subtract, and if you subtract the same number from the same number, 460 minus 460, that's going to be zeros. Then we bring down the next digit, which is a zero. And then 92 into zero, it will be zero times. And then we have one more zero here that needs an answer here. And we finish all the digits. So when we multiply, 100 times 46, and then we divide by 9.2. The answer is 500. And remember, the blue units are what? Meters. You notice, actually, in this case, we got the same answer as our estimation. But it's better to double check. If we weren't sure, because the, remember the estimation was not for the actual number. So in that case, I will have to check my answers here. Since I don't have a decimal point here, it implies the decimal point is at the end. And then I'm going to record that number here. So that will be this, this, and this. That's how it is. Also, I need to record the sign. In this case, it's positive. And then we fill in or grid. This is in case that you take a multiple choice test, guys. And you need, uh, if you have open ended items like this, when you complete your scantrons, the computers can give you the credit that you really deserve. So you can get full credit for your work. And this is great, you found your answer. And thank you, guys.